right? <clears throat> All right, let's have a look what's going on. So just a quick recap. I think about two, three months ago, we had the first meeting at uh, Office Elite. So you uh, stating your intention, having all the plus, then you want to understand after you have spread the plants with your product, you want to see what's going on physiologically to your plants, yeah. right? Okay, and then you came to my place to uh, to to learn about the physiology, how 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 um, how things actually working. So um, I made what a measurement, yeah. okay, and then so uh, we use the data and then we did the analysis. So I'll just give a quick um, recap. Uh, apa bendanya? <coughs> so I I was told that there were two places of uh, growing, right? Cerah saya singa bulu. The difference kalau kita measure on site, bahkan untuk these two sites, we are transporting the plants with the undergrad. Will it affect the behavior of the regions? Hydroponic tak? No, no, no. It will have big impact if the plants are disturbed, damaged, or somewhat um, wilting. Okay. Kalau takut masa transportation dia macam um, there is about, it's about, it's, um, the root is still intact, everything still intact, and we kind of did the measurement immediately. Yeah, yeah. So, banyak je, uh, actually, dekat, dekat, um, uh, university lain. Because if you go to, to, uh, university yang ada facility growing, actually, it's not encouraged to do measurement dalam, uh, growing, uh, chambers. High CO two, and then all the students and workers are camping sun. Yeah, so actually people would bring out all these plants still in time, and then measure it uh, at uh, safer places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pokok boleh diubah, but be careful about it, lah. No, no, you you shake violently the plants. <laughs> Um, it's okay. It's it's not it's not it's not uh it's not that fragile. It's not that fragile. Okay. After all, the plants that you gave to Ame were already five to six weeks old. Okay. It's not baby lah. Okay. So, uh, plants that have um matured up to that point, they have a stronger skeleton dalam badannya. So whatever movement or shaking that can actually be tolerated very well okay <clears throat> okay and this was the um environmental condition given however uh, i only got one uh uh environmental condition i didn't get it so the thing is <clears throat> the reason we we ask um the environmental conditions or settings from the plant factory because number one, I could only, opening. the moment we started the measurement, something not right with the plant. It's not showing regular signals. So that's why I, I was asking, what was the CO2? You see plants that have been growing entirely in high CO2 environment, the physiology is different. It's different. It's not like our regular plant with Alwani. Plants that have been growing under LED, this, the the response is also tak sama, okay. Tapi LED is okay. I was already aware about that. That CO two tu, kita nak tahu tu. And I didn't know juga um, how frequent the spraying was done. Was it one time? Was it every fortnight? So these things, you see, when I want to give consultation. Uh, I would ask benda ni so that I can be make a better judgment and verdict kat hujung macam mana. So, but let's face it, the, the plants that were given for this uh, assessment, only three. That's the minimum for statistics. 
even the three plants given we we are not sure how it was sampled yeah if you want to be concerned actually you should be concerned about the sampling of the plants i know that you you grow your plants in the right right plants that were sampled on the edge of the rack will behave differently from the plants in the middle because because of the heterogeneity in the amount of um, co2 received light lighting received and also the microclimate the, the bubble surrounding the, the plant itself so after five six weeks growing in this condition these plants will actually have its own unique identity physiologically. So it's about to get the, you know, when it comes, because this, is, if you want to, to do this as part of your science exercise, I'm just telling this, so if you want to repeat this, this, this is the thing that can pay attention. Uh, otherwise, um, we cannot make a, solid conclusion because whatever effects that you see might actually be due to chances not due to the treatment so we want to avoid that okay so, all right so okay. in terms of sampling but we, have, we, we were like random random sampling so if let's say we have to repeat what could be the suggestion to select what what plants to okay um I just assume you you grow this on the right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, on the right, right. Uh, Even by the the virtue of random ran, random selection, uh, you still need to do uh, in statistics we call blocking. Uh -huh. You do the blocking, and then let's say that for one right panel of right, uh, you decide to have four blocking. Have the random selection between blocking. Yeah, not. A random based on this one plate of red that's still uh, not uh, uh, optimum because each blocking will and uh, when you select randomly within each block somewhat you have catered for the variability within that block because we know each block will have different growth conditions Somewhat. Uh -huh. So, kita nak avoid benda tu lah. So, senangnya, if you have the growing uh, area, just, just take a tip. Block 1, 5 plant. Block 2, 5 plant. As easy as that. And then you got your lighting, and then this is the edge of your rack. Okay? So, in the block 1, decide to pick 2, 3 plant. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. One, two, three. Yeah, even better, we already know sebenarnya from, from, from uh, literature and so on. Just don't take uh, plants on the edge. Completely don't take from the edge. Because we know those on the edge, they're different. Start to move one, one cell inside. One cell inside from the um, vertical side, from the horizontal side. So back to something. Yeah, and this is the same practice people do even in the bigger plantation like lapu sawit, you know, oil palm, rubber plant, so on. People will um, not take plant sampling on the edge on the border. Simple thing, lah, gentle. Okay. Ah, all right. Um, uh, so the one that we have here, this is for the camera variety. Um, five weeks old, hydroponic, relative humidity, and so on. So, so this is a uh, this looks uh regular. Cuma tak tahu si auto tu berapa. <coughs> you see, um, masa growing tu, it it was a struggle to stabilize the plants because at first we set the plants at ambient CO two. So it, when it was struggling, I know this plant didn't grow in ambient CO2. The, the machine shows the, 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 the um, current instantaneous reading. So when we increase the uh, CO2 concentration, 
then only the the plants kind of cooperate with you. Uh, okay. So sebab tu benda tu penting lah. Penting lah. Tak salah bagi CO2 tinggi. No, it's not it's not wrong. But when you want to make assessment, it just needs to be consistent. And we know what's going on. Kalau ada benda yang imperfect here and there, we take that into consideration before we jump into the end of the conclusion. Caveats, we call it, you know, caveats, small warning here and there. <coughs> okay. Um, okay. Um, just to, to recap uh, uh, the, the, the lesson uh, sikit. So we did um, a technique for, for, for assessing this line. It's called dual, actually the name is there, dual fluorescent light curve. So I hope you still remember fluorescent sulfur. So basically, we study uh, using this, uh, the, the plant and the machine, how much the plants glow in the dark. Okay, because we know uh, for a fact that stressed plants, unhappy plants, they are going to glow or fluoresce a lot in the dark. And the machine, the CC800 machine can detect this. It's a signature identity of a stressed plant or unhappy plant. Okay. And secondly, we also measure after the plants have absorbed all the photon, how much of this photonic energy is used for photochemistry or actually go beyond the photosystem to run the electron transport. So there is a two, two important points here. We assess how much photons the plants manage to capture, number one. Just capture, not utilizing it. And this is what we call as FVFM. FVFM. Maximum quantum yield. We know the amount that we give to the leaf. For example, we give 10,000 units of photons to the leaf. We want to see how, how many of these 10,000 photons are actually absorbed by the leaf. Okay. <coughs> and then um, um, from this, let's say that the leaf absorb 8,000 out of 10,000 given. So the efficiency is actually 80%. Okay. So from this 80%, we further needs to know how much actually used for photochemistry. By photochemistry, it means here, if we look at um, this uh, little diagram here, the maximum fluorescence, this FVFM, is measuring this part, the absorption part. Immediately after that, we me measure how much of the absorbed photon actually doing photochemistry. And that would be this part here. So from this 80%, maybe only 10% move to do photochemistry. What about, what about the other 90%? This is what the machine detects as fluorescent again. As simple, as simple as that. So there are many things that can have impact on each of these values. Okay. Oh, by the way, this is what we call as phi PS2. Phi PS2. Phi, the, the Greek letter phi. Oh, not on phi. Phi. So the machine will detect the, uh, in, the, in the photochemistry part, mm -hmm. the machine will detect the 90% fluorescent, yeah. and from there we assume that 10% is being used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we cannot actually measure that 10%, but we only measure the fluorescent 90%. Um, actually, um, yes, uh, in essence, that is uh, that is correct. But um, there are equations that can be used to assess after the 10% have entered this electron transport what is the speed of the electron transport? Okay. Yeah. 
so there is equation to do that and the machine actually can do that as well right. yeah but you you need to uh wait a bit longer right. but but it, it, it can do that yeah yeah so this uh five ps2 is being done in a light adapted lift unlike lvfm lvfm is um under a completely dark adapted lift meaning that the leaf that is ready to receive any light that you give so we have dark adapt overnight complete darkness you can think of it like a super hungry baby you give anything it will just swallow devour everything so we give this we we dark adapt the leaf then we give the saturating flash the 10,000 unit of photons so we want to see this hungry leaf how many photons managed to be devoured if it devoured 8000 we know that the efficiency is 80 percent yeah but from this devoured um uh, photons how much actually contribute to the metabolism inside the leaf just because you managed to capture doesn't mean that you know how to do it what to do with it right so that's the the essence of the concept yeah yeah Oh, all right okay so since the the technique used here is is also coupled with light curve there is extra information that you can get from it so this is a typical light curve uh, I'll, I'll just enlarge this again oops sorry i'll just enlarge this so this is a typical light curve that you get um from from any uh, exercise so the um x axis is the amount of light given which is in progression from zero to super high value for example 1000 2000 micromole and then on the y axis is the assimilation rate meaning that how much co2 is being used by the leaf per given area per second okay so from this curve since it is biphasic meaning that it has got two phases you can see that the first phase is the the slopey part of it the logarithmic part of it therefore this part of the curve you can actually calculate the slope in order to get the quantum yield Quantum yield, it means for one unit of photon absorbed, how many units of CO2 is assimilated into the system? It's a simple measure. Very simple. Okay. And then um, we also know that in this first part of the light curve, the plant is actually light limiting, meaning that the light insufficient it can deal more it wants more you keep on going give it until the curve start to relax and plateauing and when this happens you know that the plant has achieved light saturation point meaning that further light increase will not benefit anymore to the carbon assimilation yeah and this will happen for quite some time even though you are consistently increasing the light intensity if you keep on increasing at least for this uh, particular species here beyond 1000 there is a good chance the curve is going to go down the moment it goes down this is what we call as photo inhibition meaning that the machinery inside the plant or the Thylakoid membrane, chloros, chloroplast membrane has been damaged by excessive amount of light energy. So, um, can we further increase this if it's already plateauing? Yes, by increasing CO2. That's why the second phase of this um, uh, light curve it's called carboxylation limited, meaning that it needs more carbon. If you want to increase the assimilation, 
but also, of course this is also to a limit because the number of cells at the point of measuring is fixed the number of chloroplasts also pretty much fixed it's true the plants can make uh, chlor more chloroplasts to deal with whatever extra that you are giving but it is time it is time okay right so from this you get the maximum um, assimilation possible for your particular plant and also you've got your dark respiration that respiration is is the amount of co2 that we measure when there is no light given to the leaf so this actually tells about the other important organelle in the cell tissue namely mitochondria so the the short summary about this is the more negative dark respiration the more metabolically active your plant tissue is because um, you are producing lots of co2 and this loss of co2 is the result from active metabolism for example breaking down glucose glycolysis even we take among us right some of us um, living a sedentary lifestyle and then some of us may be athletic if we measure the amount of co2 giving given off by 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 different sets of human you will see that those athletic actually producing lots of uh, uh co2 they're just breaking down and metabolically active inside so the same concept is applicable to the plant okay and we use this measure to to understand whether there is a potentially a healthy mitochondrial uh, arrangement in the plant or otherwise okay we have this data as well for for this assessment okay right and finally with the light curve so if you are referring to this side here we can decide whether the plant or at least the leaf that we are dealing with either two types the sun type or the shade type this is important because even in in a same plant let's say that in one plant you have 100 leaves not all 100 leaves will have similar characteristic some leaf will have the characteristic of what we call as shade plants shade leaves some leaves will have the characteristic of the sun type so what what is meant by that so sun type or sun plant meaning that the leaves are thicker the mesophyll are bigger or more in number and also the assimilation is a more rapid okay because everything is bigger you can think it of um, like a metabolically active person like your athlete and then there is a second type which is the shade type it can be the shade leaf or the whole plant is a shade plant i'm sure uh, people always hear this word right shade plants house plant so the characteristic of shade plant is the leaf is thinner metabolically inactive i mean it's it's metabolized but not as much as the sun plant and the assimilation rate is rather low however the carbon sorry the photon capture is very good for the shade plants right so the so possible that a single plant they are having both sun leaves and shade yes leaves. yeah oh. you have just look at the, the the tree outside here we've got so many trees outside here right those leaves that are directly exposed to the sun will become the sun type leaf but if you go further into the canopy deeper into the canopy these leaves are actually shade leaves and if you bring this leaf next to each other sun leaf and shade leaf you will see that they are actually different in terms of chlorophyll content the pigments content photosynthetic capacity even if you do the cross section you look under the microscope the arrangement of cellular architecture you know all the cells tissue arrangement they're also different but they're from the same plant so this is the the plant ability to acclimate with the current climatic condition so we can't do that but this is the specialty of plants 
and however bear in mind not all plants able to change sun to shade leaves very quickly only some plants okay if the plant is inherently a shade type for example the monstera you're familiar with that plant right suddenly you put it next to grow along with paddy plant the rice plant it's going to be very unhappy because genetically inherently i am not a sun type you know if you uh, if you go to the field and you measure the lighting condition in the uh, paddy field at noon time it can easily reach 2500 micromole this is scorchingly unpleasantly burning rice can deal with it it has got the genetics to deal with this monstera no <laughs> See? too much lighting too much lighting yeah too much lighting yeah but rice if you put in a monstera uh, growing condition it's not going to be very happy oh that was a sun type it can grow but it's going to be very very slow and it might die halfway before it managed to produce any flower and fruit because it's just not cut out for this kind of growing condition more sun more light please all right something like that yeah okay all right so so i have explained about this this is basically the same uh 5ps2 so the other name of 5ps2 is also the efficient no not efficient effective quantum yield above here fbfm is the maximum quantum yield 5ps2 is the effective quantum meal how much actually has to utilize to do the metabolic work in this case is the photochemistry right because for the light dependent reaction the light reaction there's only two products important to to be obtained out of this which is atp and nadph which the plants will use these two as energy currency to run the kelvin cycle the light dependent reaction or the carbon fixation so without the products of light reaction the carbon estimation is not going to happen there is simply just not enough energy right okay i'll just make it smaller again i think i got this oh computer deal not to worry okay um so in in essence much so we have like what four um, variety in in the four variety tested most of them actually um kind of unhappy when when the treatment is being given so is that a bad thing we need to look at the physiology a bit deeper to understand what's going on with the plant if it's unhappy, we should quickly arise another question. How can make you happier? All right? Don't just accept, oh, you're unhappy? Okay, close group, let's move on. Well, that's not science, okay? Science is all about improving, right? right. So, for example, like, like the curve here. So this is a typical light curve. Two phases, the first phase, the second phase. Um, the orange line is the control. The blue line is the treated leaf. I do not know how, how many times it was sprayed, but um, it's okay. I just consider it as a double blind placebo study. The one who doing the analysis and assessment do not know how it was done. I'll just simply doing the physiological assessment. Right. Um, so pretty much uh, the control actually have um, higher positive value when being compared to the uh, treatment okay so the con the treatment actually has reduced in the amount of maximum assimilation light compensation point and dark respiration and also there is no change in the quantum yield at all okay but if you go a bit deeper into the both fdfm and 5ps2 you can see that um for the treatment it manages to capture the photon like in here you see for the treatment the treated leaves 
the FEFM is actually higher than the control. However, when you try to further understand what happens to this photon, the absorbed photon actually are not contributing to photochemistry. So the, the leaf simply absorb extra photon, but they are not utilizing it. Yep. That's why you got the, the good the good scenario is lower orange, higher blue, also present in the second figure here. That's that's the good scenario. However, the scenario is reverse here. In here, you got higher orange, meaning that the control utilizes more efficiently the photon compared to the treatment. So this is actually suggesting that um, there are underlying issues that prevent the sprayed uh, leaves from utilizing uh, the extra energy captured. Right. So I would say that the products uh, still have some room of improvement in order to ensure, because at least for this variety, we know that something is happening. It managed to capture, but it cannot pass it around. So why, why it's, not meant, it's not passing around uh, the, the energy to be used for photochemistry? To, to answer that, uh, let's go back to, to this um, um, diagram here. You see, let's assume that your uh, products manage to land in this island of pigments. So all of these are pigments, okay? Various pigments and plants. Chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, um, anthocyanin, carotene, and so on. Let's say that your product managed to land on this island of pigments. However, the products are not so cooperative with the existing biological active pigments in the plant. Because if it's um, uh, cooperating, the absorbed photon will actually be used for photochemistry. So there is a good potential that, let's say that your product is over here, right? When, when the pigments are passing along the absorbed photon to this product, maybe they're just not communicating very well. You pass the ball to me, but I refuse to take it. But aren't I in the team? Yeah, but your hands is like octopus looking. We don't want that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Fluorescence. Glow. Yeah, glow. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. But energy can be transferred. Einstein law. So, the transfer ke mana? Dalam bentuk fluorescence, the glow. Cahaya tu, lagu tu tak? Betul. Yep. Mm. Yep. Could it be due to maybe nutrients level? Um, that could be also the, 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 the potential issue. Or, in the formulation alone, there is no complementary substance to facilitate the product to do its job because sometimes when you apply something to the plant you see all of what we apply to the plant which are not biology not natural is regarded as a foreign material remember plant is a living thing it has got its own immune system so the moment something foreign gets into it the the immune reactions will the nature the, the impulse compelled to do something attack it yeah however if the formulation has something to actually dampen this effect so the product might actually do something for example in your formulation you infuse some amount of phosphate for example <clears throat> because uh, if phosphate is around at least the plant can be able to do extra energy to compensate for the damage done by, by your product, for example. So the nutrient that you're talking about, actually, I don't think it's due to the nutrient given in the hydroponic system. 
because the plants physically look okay. Look at them. It's not like they are crinkly, unhappy looking, rather die than live. No. They, they, they look okay. So I don't think the nutrient is not enough in the growing uh, system. I think the nutrient we are talking about is actually in the product formulation. Yeah. Yes, in the product, it's only the carbon pattern dots that is derived from the growth and water. Mm -hmm. So, meaning they don't really like the carbon pattern dots. Right? Maybe they can like, but they need con conditional liking. I can like you, but if you bring gift to my party, if you come alone, uh uh. Mm. Mm. Something like that. If you come to my party, you, you bring gifts. And then you you bring along all your happy friend uh, and the jokester even better, so the party can be more happening and very loud. But if you are alone, you yourself you are introvert. I know you can do a lot, but you're introvert. You're not very reactive. But when your friends coming along with you, you have all the tools with you. You just function very well. So that's what what we need from you. Yeah, something like that. So another thing is. This we measure towards the end, like when covers. Uh, what about if we measure earlier? Um, from at least from what I saw during the measure measurement day, um, I don't think it's going to be much of a difference because the plant is still not flowering. It's meaning that it is still in vegetative state, maybe late vegetative. Late vegetative is fine. The plants are still growing, meaning that. The plants are, are not having the reproductive hormones released. You see, when plants are flowering, different sets of hormones are released. Some of these flowering hormones can be inhibitive to the leaf. It needs the leaf to stop sucking all the goodness because me, flowers, need to grow. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I keep saying during your training, do not measure in the reproductive stage. Because of the hormonal imbalance and stuff, we do not know what's going on. We can know if we are testing the lab, but that's a long story to go, right? So in this case, even though it's already looked late, five, six weeks, there is no reproductive structure uh, observed. That's fine. Yeah. This, I think this batch, there is a certain weight improvement for the treatment. Mm -hmm. So we are imagining maybe the improvement is due to the earliest grade. Mm -hmm. There could be increased uh, photosynthesis uh, rate mm -hmm. in the earlier stage, but the time when the we, uh, that we measure, it's not showing the improvement. Mm. Yeah, because the weight improvement also not a lot, about five to ten percent like that. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Like I said, there's a room for improvement, but you need to know where to shoot. Mm. Right. So this is why. Um, physiology is very very vital in agriculture meaning that there are many people doing the uh, high profile discipline in agriculture you know the breeding people very famous you know the biochem the GMO people the genetic people very famous but eventually all of these people they will come back to physiology can you help me to explain this what's going on yes you will come back to physiology to to explain after we have a new variety, after we have done gene alteration, or after we have played around with the um, hybridization, actually, internally, what's happening to enable the plants to behave such a way? That, that, that's why if, uh, physiology is important. Yeah. Even if you go to the hospital, there's a, a human physiologist. They were asked, they were asked uh, what was happening to the patient. Yeah. Okay, right. So we're coming back to the hair. Yeah. So um so for the red butter head, um similar curve like curve pattern compared to the um green butter head, it's red, but in the picture it's not red. Maybe it's due to the your lighting. Should it be red? Because the the name of the variety is red butter head. Yeah, because the, it's uh like uh, the limitation of the past mm. couldn't grow in the weight is actually weight uh, because of the lighting that they use. Uh, they actually weight. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So the, the, the pattern is similar, but it's slightly worse for this variety. 
because it didn't manage to capture any better compared to the control. It didn't manage to capture, it didn't manage to utilize the photonic energy based on the FVFM and 5PS2 assessment. Yeah, true. And this variety, we recorded negative improvement <laughs> for, for red butterhead. Uh, not uh, green butterhead, it's, it's a it's good. Five to ten percent. Okay, all right. Mm, maybe it's in the nature of, of um, you know, sometimes when, when, let's put it this way, there is no one drug that can cure everything. Yeah. That's why in the fertilizer industry, people divide it into what we call as color-coded fertilizer. MTK green is meant for vegetative leaf growing. MTK uh, red to trigger flowering and blooming. And MTK blue to, to, to obtain a good fruiting yield. So there is not one fertilizer. Oh, just give the fertilizer. It can promote leafing, flowering, fruiting. No. So maybe for your product development strategy, maybe this is something that should be included. So if you want to make a claim, maybe like, okay, this is actually good for leafy. However, if you are dealing with um, fruit vegetables, we'll recommend this. Because this is more sensible for, for your plants. Something like that. Yeah, that's what I said earlier. Uh, yes. Uh, in, let's put it this way. Increasing the sample number, number one, if you see any changes in here, like in here, the only variety that is actually happening to it here. This is seraphine is the only variety that we can be statistically confident that the changes happen because the data variation is rather small. Right. So meaning that even with a small sample number, it is good enough to, to detect any changes statistically significant. So when you increase the, um, sorry, when you increase the sample number, you actually, number one will happen for something like this. This is not significant, right? You will have the significance confidence increased. Yeah. But will it change the direction? Like in here, orange low, blue low. It, uh, that depends on the sampling method. That's why sampling method is very important. Very, very important. You want to eliminate what we call in statistic mm, confounding variables. Meaning that variables that you don't plan to include them in the study. For example, extra wind, extra movement, lighting from, you give uh, LED light, lighting, right? But the plants growing on the edge get extra lighting from the room lighting. So I got two lights here. I got light from the grow light above me and on the side, I also get this light that shining for your pathway. Confounding variable. Yeah. Or maybe the trough, the hydroponic trough. I don't know how, how your system looks like. Maybe some of the, uh, because sometimes the, the, the palm, it needs to palm to such a big structure. The flow can be different in certain areas. Some, some is slower, some is faster. You know, a heterogeneity, the gradient of the flow, that also have impact. Because those that experience um, uh, in more intense flow, the oxygenation is better. Right, compared to the more stagnant water. So this is something that we, we, we are trying to eliminate. Confounding variable. So when you have something in the middle, usually, that is the safest area, actually. Yeah. So increasing sample number, always a good idea. But again, if you have, let's say, 10 plants instead of three here, it might take him the whole week to do it. Just for one variety. <laughs> Just for one variety. Um, 
since we already know, uh, the plus can actually capture the uh, quantum dots, whatever you are applying. So we know that you need to tweaking around with the, the product so that the phi PS2 is increasing. So you don't need to measure other things. Just go straight to phi PS2. Yeah, no need to do, do the light curve. Just go straight to LVFM and then wait a bit more. Do the 5 PS2. That is possible. That is possible and quicker and he's happier. <laughs> yeah. So oh. that improve your yeah, N number. <laughs> like, at least we, you've got the identity of the variety. This, this light, light response curve in all study, people just do it at the beginning so that you got a feeling, what's your identity, like your physiological identity? So you know that, just do it once and don't have to be a lot of uh, sample numbers as well. You just need to know the base, the base of it. Right, yeah, the benchmark. So maybe for the light exposure, you do for three, mm. but for the... Uh, for this down here, you maybe can do more, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Whatever photoluminescence actually will interact with the existing pigments in the plant. Pigments in the plant is actually creating their own substance, the anthocyanin and so on, which is called polyphenols. Okay, so when you are spraying something and the plants think that, okay, this thing actually can count in with our group, you will have more, for example, we can see get produced in the uh, tissue because your product bioavailable matching bio matched with the leaf it agrees with the leaf it compatible with the leaf with the existing polyphenol compounds in the leaf but if your product somehow i don't know maybe the charges are wrong the ph is wrong so many things can go wrong your leaf regard that as this is foreign material Attack, attack, attack. When plants are busy attacking, they got no time to do vitamin C and so on. Yeah, they need to invest in creating arsenal and armor of infantry to attack the problem rather than making the breads and all the beautiful things to be kept in the kingdom. They're just busy doing something else. Yeah, something like that. It's also Atlanta. Oh, okay. Okay, why not? Okay, 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 uh, so not seraphine actually. Uh, Tamira. Tamira is not the only one that has all this positive value. And as you can see, the blue line, which is the treated line, for the first time, among all of the sample tested, above the yellow uh, orange line. So meaning that it has got, when you, you spray the plant, the photosynthesis increase by about 7%. However, there's no changes in the LCP. So you see, no changes is actually good. When you spray this variety with the product, it didn't change it into different sun or shade type. It maintains the type of the plant. No changing. So that's what SCP light composition tell you. Okay. So no changing, that's good. And then the dark respiration actually, when you spray it, it respires more. So meaning that it's, it becomes metabolically more active. Yeah, due to what? Well, maybe more mitochondria or maybe more sugar. When you got more sugar, naturally you will break down more. 
the more you break down, the more byproduct, which is CO2, will be released out. Hence, detected here. Okay, and also the uh, quantum yield. Quantum yield also improve. Quantum yield is simply the slope here. Okay, the point that we choose is over here. This is like compensation point. The zero zero here. So the quantum yield also improve by six percent. Okay, but however, when you look at the treatment here, um, that's not much. In, uh, there, there is a tendency for the FVFM to increase, but only marginally. This is when you, you want to consider to increase the end size for this variety at least, because you want to be certain. Is that true? Is that due to the treatment? I don't want to be due to the chances of my good luck that day. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that it managed to capture very, very goodly, and it also managed to use it slightly better compared to the control. Yeah. So I would say that at least for this variety, which was grown in Churras, is actually responsive to your product. At least for this variety. This is only this variety, Tamira. Was it different, the growing condition between Sungai Bulo and Churras? Was it different? Yes. So that could be, um, could be the reason. I do not know. Like... Actually, I do, I do not need to know phone. Um, it, it's just some, some advice you need to take into consideration when you are doing this kind of work. Yeah. 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 So, why we tested Tamira in Charas is because when the Sunai Bolo broke Tamira, negative 20% or more. Oh. Uh, so, we, we so go, go to Charas then. Yeah. So, <laughs> we, we carry out this test in Charas <laughs> to prove that actually it's not. Our product issue, but maybe the system. system. Yeah. So what's wrong with the system? The, the one we haven't figured out. Uh, maybe maybe I should do plus there. I can tell you <laughs> one day. Doctor, for now we see that. Yeah, one time, like two years ago, uh, I was demonstrating the spectrometer, but that was with my faculty. I was just the plankton by the side. <laughs> Not the <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> yeah. So I think um, growing condition also important. It shows here. When, when the plants are busy dealing with non-conducive growing conditions, it cannot deal with whatever goodness you are giving to it. It just can't. You are trying to love someone, but this someone has been mentally traumatized and needs to go to hospital every week to take medication. No matter how much love you're trying to give, I got lots of baggage in my head to deal with right now. I know you're trying to do goodness for me, but I just cannot assimilate this goodness into my life right now. Maybe after I'm done with my medication course, after three months, you come back to love me. Different side by side. Mm. But in Chiras, it's like they have trade, like different trade, different here. Yeah, it's pretty here, uh, but not side by side. Ah, uh, yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, plants, we know they release VOC, volatile organic compounds. And this actually can be inhibitory or mutually complementary. If it's inhibitory, like um, uh, you have one plant here, or and then another plant here, they just make the other plant unhappy. Even though they are not touching, they don't have to touch. Maybe they are touching by the roots. So these are, um, actually, you can see this, the cut, corn plantation. You see some corn, they don't have weeds surrounding it because they are releasing what we call allelopathy, a certain chemicals to retard the growth of the weeds. Yeah. But you can see that, oh, why chili can grow next to it? Well, because the, the chili don't, don't mind. Right. Yeah. So, um, again, but, the but advice to, to... Basically, they are all okay and they are still able to sell those produce. Just that maybe... You could do better, actually. Maybe they are not happy 
Yeah, yeah. But we couldn't detect from. Meaning that you could do better with a slight arrangement. When they are doing slightly better, let's say that 10%, you're already getting extra 1,000. Who knows? 10, 10, money, money. Ching, 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 ching. Just by changing the arrangement. Yeah. That's, that's a separate um, study, actually. Banyak, 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 banyak pokok macam tu. You do not know, maybe some plants, the roots are cannot touch each other. You see, roots are releasing something as well, not only the leaf. Some chemicals from the roots, even though they don't have to compete for nutrient and water because it's in hydroponic, the roots actually having this innate ability from the wild. I need to press you so that I can eat. But there's a bowl of food. Why do you need to press me? No need. No, it's in my nature. Yep, yep. So, so that, uh, experiment at UPM, people use separate tank. For, which have, you got three tiers. This three tier, one tank. This three tier, one tank. Manual saja lah guna gravity tak ada electric power. Because we want to eliminate the interaction of the water coming from from this killer plant, killing the whole system. I mean, like you you are growing five varieties, maybe four can coexist. This one, this one, this is the culprit. It could be that. All right. Okay. So um, I think that's about it. So the conclusion, um, the, the treatment is not satisfactory, but I do not know why, because uh, it managed to change it into the shade type, which means that the plants, uh, if you don't spray, the IQ is 150. When you spray, the IQ becomes 90. You retard it in the, into the form of shade type. Which, tak payah lah, shape plant, is, this is not a shape plant. <laughs> right, yeah. So, some amount captured memang can be seen here. Boleh masuk dalam pokok. You see, mungkin sebenarnya your product tak masuk dalam chloroplast pun. That's a good potential of it. It only lands on the surface of the out, outer cell, uh, cell wall. And then it acts like a mirror mirror reflecting glistening when the lights come to it and then shines upon the existing pigments in the chloroplast yeah because sometimes we don't know this 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 product they will coagulate now if you don't sonic it so it has the theory we made uh the active region how will you mm. Yeah, yeah, because in the first place, product, product tu tak masuk dalam tu pun. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, well. Maybe some plants you spray, the stomata are bigger. So it, it, it absorbs into the system readily and the uh, cell wall and plasma membrane more permeable. They are more welcoming. They're just not selective. So they allow everything to get in. So you see that, oh, it works in here. But the other species, that's not very welcoming. It's a tight juncture. Like a, like this party got no guts at the door. You have two brown, bouncer guy waiting at the door to ask each guest. ID? Oh. Right. So, yeah, harapan benda tu boleh dibetulkan dengan adjuvant sebenarnya. Adjuvant, sometimes you put surfactant, sometimes you add penetrant, sometimes you, uh, so many things. Macam-macam benda boleh. Right, yeah. Yeah. Kalau same result pun mungkin at different uh, varying degree. 
some more more responsive, some responsive but at lower magnitude. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's that's the experiment that needs to be done. Lah. We need to understand is it due to the inherent genetic issue with the plants or the growing condition? So that's why in on all, all this experiment, we actually invest like okay, two months we want to know is it the growing issue or the plant issue, and then the two months like a strategic testing. So that you can, um, you know, Ocrum razor, eliminate one issue at a time. Then you will know. After six months, okay, this is the information. Oh, that's good enough. And you can proceed. Yeah. Sebab, uh, sebelum we carry out all this time, mm -hmm. uh, when we have home garden, using the product, when we have the same product, when we have the same product, okay, so that comes to my conclusion, the card number 6 to Result could be different with plants, but grown in natural sunshine. Yep. Lain cahaya matahari. In in um, sunlight, you got UV. You got UV, you got far red. With the LED, the spectrum is limited to whatever that LED is giving out. Yep. Yep. So... Yes, CO2. True. Very true. CO2. Okay, Dr. Nasi, we still have one set of experiments mm -hmm. that we will measure the, uh, the photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. I think this experiment we briefly share as a meeting up in the office. Mm -hmm. I, we recap. Mm -hmm. So, this mechanism is not direct spraying onto the leaves, mm -hmm. but we are uh, using the C2D polymer. Okay. So meaning the light will shine through the polymer and to, to the plant. So in terms of measurement, what we initially plan, something you got like response curve and mm. price uh yes to mm, yeah. any other suggestion from you to look at any other parameter that we think we didn't plan initially. Um it's pretty much like this. Kalau is something is definitely sure here, you can actually go for CO2 response curve. If your product manage to make your photosystem happier, that will result in abundance of energy molecules, namely ATP and NADPH. These two molecules, when they are in abundance, automatically Kelvin cycle will run very fast and you will get lots of uh, assimilation. Yeah. And this is the time you can use the ACI curve, the CO2 response curve. So do you recommend us to also do the measurements of CO2? I, you, most people, I would say that, you know what, let's not jump into ACI just yet because ACI is a, a bit more complicated. Yeah. So you, stick to yeah, yeah, you can just stick with this. Because it's simpler, it's quicker, you can increase the N number. That's very important to increase the N number. I know three is already accepted, but this is biology. Right. So, um, safe, better safe than sorry. You don't want to be happy over false alarm, false excitement. We don't want that. Just, just be certain about it. So, with this experiment that you said that you have a like a like a what like a dome or piece of polymer on top of the plant. So I assume it's going to disperse the light, right? Um, yeah, you can continue doing this. Yeah, yeah, you can continue doing this, and maybe um, you can use the spec meter for chlorophyll. You got the leaf, just clamp on it, take the chlorophyll reading. Yeah, yeah, because plants that have uh, dispersed light, we we know that the uh, chlorof chlorophyll A will, will increase. Yep. Because why? Why why it becomes that way? Because um, dispersed light do not have too much of energy. The plants have more time to deal with the incoming photonic energy. 
so it can relax deal with it relax deal with it with the open light they have to deal everything at once so so many investment needs to be taken into making sunscreen with the dispersed light they can actually maybe reduce the sunscreen by 50 percent and this extra sunscreen material can be converted into sugar actually yeah and then you get more biomass biomass is very important so um the chlorophyll and also the dry biomass separately both root system and the shoot system that will tell you a lot like really a lot what what's going on with that just looking at biomass dry not fresh dry you can have fresh for your market uh, assessment this product uh, has spread onto my plant yield you know heavier fresh fresh produce but we want to understand the physiology to understand physiology we go with with the biomass dry dry biomass eliminate the water so whatever that has been left behind is pure carbon and hydrogen yeah if the plants has managed to do super productive assimilation it will have lots of carbon and hydrogen glucose six CH, 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 and I'm looking at molecule too. Right. Uh, I have a question here. What's up, what's up, you can ask me if you have it. Uh, okay, come to LDAs, to LK cultivation, what we tend to measure is the dry biomass. Yeah. If I get any parameter, you have to measure it. CO2 and oxygen evolution. What is your oxygen or evolution? You can trap the gas for two measure. And also, ambi sample. Yeah. And then ambi air tu, lepas tu tengok dia punya BOD, biological oxygen demand. Hmm. That can tell you already kalau it's producing lots of less oxygen. Um, biological oxygen demand uh, demand oxygen yang ada dalam tu lah maksudnya ya yeah, yeah. kalau dia ada banyak CO2 pH akan jatuh boleh measure pH juga ya yeah. boleh measure pH and you can measure TDS total dissolvable solid You know, I think di zaman sekarang, kalau you go to agriculture shop, beli apa tu, PC meter, you can change the mode to TDS, Total Dissolved Solids tu. Jadi, bagi tahu, ada berapa banyak, dia tak bagi tahu compound apa, tapi it, it tell you, there's so much dissolved solid in this solution now. Which, if suddenly spike, you can send to other specialized lab to further test, what compounds, is it sugar, is it vitamins, I don't know, it can be anything. Ya, masih kata dia kata tu kan. So usually saya punya daripada sistem tu, dia dia enam. So kalau jatuh tu maksudnya lima. Kalau jatuh tu, yes, ikan di lima. Jadi dia takkan, maksudnya dia takkan infeksasi pada pokok ke? Sebab nanti akan merosakkan akram tu. Kalau become too acidic, Makronutrien akan susah diambil oleh pokok. Kalau becomes too alkaline or basic, trace elements akan susah diambil oleh pokok. However, pH 5 to 6.5 is known generally to be okay to most plants. Because plants, even though when you dip the probe, it reads 5.2, at the root region the rhizosphere surrounding the root itself the roots can change the ph to its liking by releasing hydrogen or hyd hydroxyl ions yeah 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 maksudnya the roots can make amends small amendment to some degree so that it's a happier place for the root okay Uh, but tak tak banyak lah sebab pokok tu pun akar dia tak mungkin tak banyak ataupun sistem tu ya sikit so kalau saya nak check kanan dan kanan side pokok saya akan check pokok pokok apa is it aquatic um, okay okay uh -huh. so, 
Um, you need to have a control. You need to have a control. Um, the regular water buffer without the plants, and then you can have a benchmark without the plants, but this water contains all the nutrient solution and so on. This is the pH. But the moment you add the plants, this is the pH. The moment you add the plant that has been sprayed with the product, this is the pH. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because the, the fact that ramai orang tak, tak tahu or not aware is plants that have high photosynthesis create a lot of sugar that also be translocated, transported to the roots. And then the roots will release in the form of sugar. For who? For microbes. For microbes. That's, that's why when you are watching documentaries about climate change, people, are, people keep saying that soil is a good carbon reserve, carbon store. How? How carbon is stored in the uh, how yeah, how carbon is stored, stored in the soil? How come? We know only plants, right? It, that's above ground. How come soil underground store the carbon? Microbes. Microbes who store the carbon. Yeah. yeah. So but and then you can look at the, the root root lah. Can take out Amit Gambar root too. Banyak ada dekat dalam apps and software free untuk quantify root uh, uh, anatomy, root, root, root morphology. You just take the, the image and then the software or apps dekat phone boleh bagi tahu root tu berapa dia punya coverage. Yeah, that can happen as well. Um, asalkan consistent. If you usually separate the root from the mother plant, boleh guna. I think make it consistent. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Oh, padam lah. Let me. 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 Turun sikit. Turun sikit. Mm -hmm. So memang even like control treated pun kita tak akan nampak beza sangat. Physically. I mean uh, for vegetables. Oh oh yeah 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 yeah. Kerana yeah. kerana tu dah power. Hmm. So um yeah no. So kira control treated pun sama je. Sepatut, sepatutnya sama. It's not like the photosynthesis is not happening at all. No. It's it's not optimum. Because you know, the moment plants have entered reproduction phase, you can actually see the leaf actually turning yellow. Yellowish already. Yellow tak? Masa ambil tu? Ah, dia macam yellow. You know that the moment it looks yellowish, some amount of enzymes, protein and nitrogen has been broken down and re-assimilate, re-transported to the growing fruit. Remobilize. Break down in the leaf to send where? To the baby fruit. So, bila dia dah break down all this protein, less capacity to do photosynthesis. Can do photosynthesis but at lesser capacity. And it, it can be in, inaccurate. Yeah, yeah. So, but how do you want to quantify this leaf is slightly yellow, more yellow? That's yes, not the extra variable that I'm going to worry about. Right. That's why I keep always advice go for the vegetative phase. Everybody is green. Nobody is breaking down anything. Now do the measurement for the synthesis. Let's see. What's your true assimilation capacity? So, typically, what is the that depends on the species actually. But for, for, for choice some, uh, sorry, choice some, me, um, you can take up to six weeks old since transplant. Usually seven weeks too, they dah mula not uh, masuk up so to six weeks. Earlier week. than six weeks, it's not uh, recommended. Like, for example, the growth week, second week, third week. You can do that. If you do that, you will have a stronger data. You have a progressive. Vegetative, so early vegetative, 
what's the story like meat vegetative what the story like and the late vegetative what's the story like so you have a comprehensive vegetative assimilation identity for that particular plant or writing yeah the, the identity of it it's going to be different of course but yeah yeah but if you don't have the luxury to test early mid and late just stick to the meat it's always safe yeah so meat meat vegetative this is around three weeks old yeah three weeks old three three to four weeks huh? it's a bit forgivable yeah. And late vegetative is six weeks, right? Uh, entering seven is is is, is a early uh, reproductive. Early reproductive. Yeah, at least for for this vegetable like this. That's why I uh, I advise not to go seven week. Maximum is six. six. Yeah, yeah. We we just want to be safe. I know. Six it's, is grow or measure at six. Um, you can measure the most, the latest, at six weeks since transplant. Yeah, yeah. Because can I that from the sowing? Because usually in agriculture practice, people sow in different nursery condition. Right. It's not the actual actual growth condition. Yeah, with rice in the field, we can use DAS day after sowing. But when you are dealing with transplanted crop or plant, we we use DAT day after transplant. Because the condition during nursery is not the same as the actual growth field condition. Mm, that's why. So, Doctor, for Peggy, since you understand the security, what is the window that you recommend to spread? I I would say you need to understand what kind of rice variety you are dealing with you see rice variety in malaysia at least we've got the short maturity mid maturity and late maturity okay if for the short maturity you need to spray before 60 days uh, for short maturity variety for the mid maturity variety most of the rice in Malaysia, mid maturity, maksudnya they mature around 120 days, macam tu. Um, maximum 85 to 90 days. Before, before that. Uh, yeah, yeah, before that. Yeah, before that. Maximum. Don't don't go beyond 90. Don't. Yeah, yeah. You could see some see some power at. 75 days flower already coming but the flower is not active yet it is still baby so we regard that oh you are still leaf yeah but the moment rice flower they have come out they have actually started the feeling phase you know the milk the milking phase uh no the milk actually come from the other leaves surrounding it I know part, right? The um, tanam buah mati. It's not perennial, like mango tree. If 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 you miss one season, you can wait another season, right? Because it's perennial. Yeah, something like that. Hmm? Okra. <laughs> Okra. Tunggu pokok tu bengkok sakit pinggang. <laughs> <laughs> um, short, sampai 60 hari. Mid, 80-90. Kalau late, um, late ni susah sebab late ni dia lagi luas, lagi panjang dia punya tu. Sebab ada variety kat Sabah, 6, 6 bulan baru ni. So, susah nak cakap. Lately, it's not like that. the variety, they mature almost 140 hari. Other variety mature 140 hari. Jadi kat mana pun ada tak hari tu. <laughs> kan besar dia punya tu kan. Uh, panjang sangat, panjang sangat. Okay. Um. Apa ni? I want my beer. Eat, eat, eat. Sip, 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 sip. Ha <laughs> <laughs>